I'm Phil, and my fabulous wife of 11 years is Erin. For more than a year, we've been taking advantage of our kids' remote school by traveling the world as a family. Our most recent getaway has taken us to Europe, starting with a week on the French Riviera. In this episode, we're taking you on a tour of our five favorite restaurants throughout Moujon, Antibes, and Cannes, including three that carry Michelin stars. Welcome to our latest destination dining tour, Moujon, France. And we are starting off right away. Uh, we got in it today, so we're a little jet lagged, a little tired, but we are going to. Not bad. I'm, I'm fine. Ow. We are going to a really special place in Moujon. It is. La Mondier. It is. It's got a really great history to it. They've catered to many celebrities because of the Cannes Film Festival. Stallone, Sharon Stone. De Niro. It Robert said. De Niro. Yeah. Everybody. So we're really excited to see what it's all about, and we'll share a little story about its history. And this is going to be a great episode because Moujon, France, is actually the most Michelin-starred village in France in the 1980s. So you know this is going to be some amazing food. It's right up our alley. In 1969, Moujon only had two restaurants in the village. That's when the famous chef Roger Verge came along. He was considered the greatest chef of his time. By the 1980s, Moujon had 11 Michelin stars, including this one by Roger Verge himself, La Amandier. The building was an olive oil factory, and they still kept some of the old charm and equipment from its original purpose. But you can't beat dining with this view. We are very tired, but we're very excited. Phil and I are each getting the chef's tasting menu, and the kids are getting some buttered pasta. It's gonna be their first pasta in Europe. And we have this gorgeous view. It's the perfect way to start off a dining tour. And of course we have our Bordeaux to go along with it. And Colt just said this green stuff is good. So we have our mousse bouche, and I'm gonna try this green stuff. Mmm. It is kind of amazing. Mmm. Mmm. This is full of goodness. This is almost like a ravioli, but with a puff pastry. It's like a little gazpacho cold soup with some basil in it. Mm. That tastes incredible. And there's a little stuffed puff pastry. It's like a little ravioli that's fried, I think. Mmm. 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 Mm, delicious. I am so excited about this. It is a purple artichoke with a mousse filling and then a broth. I'm not sure if I should eat it with a fork or a spoon so I can get more of this broth, but... Oh, wow. It's a whole artichoke heart that is then stuffed. And then it has the crispiness of this other stuff on top. Definitely try it. Here it comes. Delicious. That is so light. It just sort of like foams in your mouth, like the mousse just sort of poof. It's all that flavor. Mmm. Tell me when you're ready. Orzo and butter. <laughs> that is so good. Uh, and you look, sir? Oh, merci. And this is what I'm most excited about. This is what I wanted to order before we saw that there was a chef's tasting menu. It is lobster tortellini in a bisque sauce, and it's like foamy, kind of bubbling. Mmm, it is like it evaporates in your mouth. Yes, this does sound really good right now. Mmm, that's incredible. It's like lobster bisque with lobster tortellini. So we have a little variation to the chef's menu. What I have is the typical uh, chef's menu item, and it is a duck confit, and there's duck confit over here, and then there is a, um, a duck liver in puff pastry. Mm. That is almost like the best chicken pot pie, but with a duck and not so much sauce, it's just so juicy from the duck in the pup pastry. It's really yummy. And Phil has something different, something special this chef decided to offer today. Yes, I got lamb chops with some sauteed onion. Oh, nuts. nuts. Our favorite dessert is cheese, and our dessert plate came, and it's cheese. It is two different kinds of goat cheese. 
And it's the perfect proportions, too. They do it right here in France with the tasting menus. Good sizes. And just when you thought we were done, there's another course. And then this little dessert that looks just like a lemon on top of a cookie. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. It's really thick. It's not as cold as ice cream or gelato, but it's so thick like that. So it's thicker than a mousse. It's like some sort of a, maybe a custard, but with lots of lemon on top of the cookie. It's incredible. Mmm. Wanna try it? With a little help from the kids, we managed to clean every delicious plate. So our French dining tour is off to a great start. Now we get to look forward to another great Moujon restaurant tomorrow. For tonight's dinner, we're going to a place called La Mediterranee. And it's got some really good steak, some amazing specials listed for the night, even a little bit of pasta, some foie gras. So I think we're gonna have a really good meal tonight. Love how open it is. Super fun to sit next to the street, good people watching, but the light and the time of day, it's beautiful. And the weather is so perfect. Mm. Ooh, that's yummy. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I totally screwed that up. I took our server's recommendation and I'm getting the gnocchi. It has burrata, mozzarella burrata, and it, I'm sure it's gonna be good. I got the filet de loup. So it's a fish filet and it has some, uh, I think, creamed carrots with paprika as well as maybe some fennel. And I, I'm really bad at reading French, so I can't say for sure until it gets here. We both ordered from the specials menu. That's why Phil kept looking inside. I got buttered pasta. So we got foie gras for an appetizer, and this looks so interesting. I am super excited to try it because it doesn't look like a typical foie gras that you have at fine dining in the US. I'm gonna take a pinch of this salt. This is interesting, this little, um, it looks like a rind, but I feel like it might be kind of a jelly. Mm. It's really cold and it's harder than I expect for foie gras. It's almost like a gelatin in it or something, but it's really delicious and this little outside rind is maybe a touch sweet, so it balances it really well. It tastes good. Yeah, this reminds me a little bit of the foie gras three ways at L'Atelier in Las Vegas. Mm. Yeah, that outside is interesting, like apricot or peach or something, right? Mm. Mm, merci. Mmm. Mmm. That definitely tastes like it was just pulled out of the Mediterranean today. I'm sure I made the right choice. This is incredible. The burrata has truffles shaved on top of it in this little truffle mound. It's the best kind of mound, right? Mmm. Mm. Oh my god. My god. That is blowing my mind. That is so good. It is so good. I don't know what else to tell you. It's so good. <laughs> Well, that was another really great meal here in Mujan. Tomorrow, we are headed to Cannes and we've got two really special meals. I don't know what I just did there. <laughs> we are having lunch at La Garite, which is part of the Larens Islands on St. Marguerite Island. So it's a 10 minute boat ride off of the Bay of Cannes. We're exploring it today, but we are gonna have this fantastic meal by the water and enjoy some cocktails. It's gonna be our first cocktail in Europe because we've only had wine so far. I was not expecting this. <laughs> this is beautiful. I got an espresso martini and I love that it has two straws. Phil and I can share it because you know how much he loves coffee. <laughs> That is good. It is a dessert, but it's not even sweet. It's just vodka, Kahlua, and espresso. And it's all whipped. Mm. These are our favorite olives, Castamel Trano. They are so delicious. So John Dory is one of my favorite fish, and this one is John Dory, although here they call it 
filet de Saint Pierre. Mm. It's been so long since I've had this, I can't wait. The sauce looks very buttery and amazing. Not so much butter as like white wine and mushrooms. You get the vegetable, it's like a vegetable kind of broth thing going on. Try this, baby. Mm. I got the small octopus grilled with olive oil. Perfect light lunch. Mm. It's a spicy pepper, I like it. But that octopus is so tender. And it's almost crispy on the outside from the olive oil. Is that all the arrows? That's really good, I like it. Perfect lunch. Delicious light lunch. But for now, we're gonna order another cocktail, take it to the beach and hang out. And if you wanna see more footage of this island and the whole experience here, make sure to subscribe because that's another episode where we tour Mujan and the neighboring areas. We are headed to dinner. I am really excited about this dinner. It is with a somewhat celebrity chef in the area that all of these celebrities go to. And it looks like it's just this charming uh, cave-like interior and the exteriors, the patio seating that you imagine in Europe. And I'm so excited about this food because if Brad Pitt likes it, then you know it's gotta be good. Michelin star. I think you're actually excited about something. Is it? Mm. I'm excited to try this mousse bouche. The only two words I understood was cauliflower puree, I think, and limoncello. Mm. Sugar grim. It's tasty. Vodka and um, what kind of fruit did you say it was? Passion. Try it. Ooh, that's really good. I've never had three amuse bouche before. That's crazy. No, really good. Fresh. Plenty. So, in case you didn't like the first three amuse bouches, this is the real amuse bouche. <laughs> this is salmon with squid ink pasta. Oh, that's really good, babe. You've got to try it. Perfect little cup of salmon, too. It's not a huge piece of sashimi, and it's not a tiny piece of carpaccio. It's good, flavorful. I am so happy right now. I am so happy we are at a Michelin starred restaurant and Phil and I each got one of the chef's specials. Mine is the squid ink cannelloni and it has this squid here, a shellfish sauce. It looks incredible. I almost, I'm almost afraid to eat it. It is really good. It is really, really good. There's squid inside the squid ink. Cannelloni, so it's not like it's not cheese you would think maybe with the cannelloni. It's literally squid inside. All right, so this is my clay uh, accoutrement, and it has the number 31745, which I think means that I am the 31,745th person to order this essentially. And um, mm -hmm. so this one was created in honor of the chef's first son in maybe the 90s, I'm not sure, but we'll put that number on the screen. So this is the lamb cooked in that clay. That's so good. I think lamb sometimes can be a real pain in the butt to eat because it's like on the bone or something. Having it like this where you can just cut a slice off and it's delicious, it's perfectly cooked. I'm assuming it's medium rare, but babe, you gotta try it because it is just tender and delicious and perfectly seasoned. Yeah, immediately, those are amazing flavors. And I love how I had to watch Phil crack the clay around the lamb. <laughs> My favorite dessert in the world, cheese. <laughs> Let's dig into this cheese. We've got maybe eight, eight different kinds of cheeses. Mm. This restaurant was so much more than a meal. It was an incredible culinary experience. If you get the chance to visit, we highly recommend ordering from the Chef's Daily Specials. You won't be disappointed. For tonight's meal, we are on our third Michelin starred restaurant. Woohoo! This one's called Le Bistro de Ma. Is that right? I'm sure du it ma. is. 
Le I Bistro mean, Dumas. We all know I can't pronounce it right. <laughs> and wow, it couldn't be a more beautiful setting. Look at these grounds. Gorgeous, gorgeous. It's on a beautiful hotel, and this is one of two Michelin-starred restaurants that are at this hotel. Uh, we are going to the one that's a little bit more casual because we have the kids with us. We haven't been seated more than two minutes. We already have the amuse bouche, and it is a gazpacho, which is going to be fantastic for tonight because it's already it's, it's still warm out. So I'm looking forward to something that's going to chill us out a little bit. And then we have these um, mandolins. These are black garlic mandolins. Here you go, buddy. Try that and tell me what you think. And then something I think Brooklyn is really going to be psyched out of her mind about guacamole. Mm -hmm. Here you go, darling. So good. It's cold, my tea, That's why I went like this. <laughs> but it's so good. I you to try a gazpacho. Mmm. Yeah. Watermelon. Mm. Yeah, watermelon gazpacho. You know that's Phil's favorite. Maybe not watermelon. Maybe cantaloupe. Yeah, I think you're right. Cantaloupe. Oh man. It doesn't even taste like a gazpacho, really. It tastes like uh, baby food. <laughs> in a very good way. Phil and I got butternut squash for our appetizer. Of course, this is a roasted butternut squash on the bottom here, and just amazing goodness around. And I don't even know all of what is in it, partly lost in translation, and partly because there's just so mushrooms. many ingredients. Phil says morel mushrooms. <laughs> Oh, that just melts in your mouth. That is so good. Every delicious flavor you can imagine. So savory. Oh yeah, I love this. Ooh la la. You might not know that I used to ice skate, which is why I chose the skate wing for dinner. Also, one of my very first incredible foodie experiences I had with Phil, we had skate. It's so warm. Mmm. This is like a beet puree on the bottom. This is so crispy on top. It's almost like a crispy potato. It's so crunchy, but that skate is so flavorful. It's probably one of my favorite seafoods to get if I ever find it on the menu. All right, let's see. Let's, I like to do a little bit of everything. Get a lay of the lamb. Oh, wow. And this is like cauliflower rice, essentially very, very fancy cauliflower rice. And this presentation is so interesting because it looks like a crab leg or something, like it's going to be in a shell, but you can cut right through it. Moulet here, of course. Mmm, that is so good. It basically tastes like a salmon to me. Delicious. This is a great meal. And probably the best scenery view that we've had since we've been here. I think that meal was quieter than our average meal, but because it was just such an intimate setting, right next to so many other people and everyone was whispering, so we just didn't really speak. <laughs> so we thought, felt like we had to whisper too. <laughs> but it was delicious. Yeah, my skate was so good. And I would, I would say that I was mostly blown away by that butternut squash appetizer we had. Squatch. Squatch. This was really our last meal as part of this series, but we've got a lot of other episodes like this, so be sure to subscribe. And, uh, and we're locked in here. So we're going to see the if we can somehow get out. Gates are closed. <laughs> Two years ago, we decided it was time for my ad agency to abandon the in-person five-day work week. So we 86 our office and work hours, allowing our own family of five to start traveling almost constantly. We now work, school, and explore in a new place every week. From our own mountain and beach homes to exotic villas, resorts, and yachts around the world. As we experience and support diverse cultures, we hope to inspire more families to design a life of freedom and adventure. Because there's a new American dream. It's one that's void of templated expectations, templated career paths, templated education, templated families, templated homes, and templated lives. Freedom's no longer American tagline. It's just the new global way of life. Every day that you spend doing something that doesn't fulfill you to your core, you're living your life on pause. You're deferring genuine family time with no guarantee that there will be a tomorrow or a someday. Some people follow that mentality their entire lives. We've chosen to never live that way again. We appreciate you following our journey. The more our channel grows, the more time we can spend traveling to more locations, 
contributing to these cultures, highlighting local businesses, and sharing inspiring stories from these communities. So please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing so that you can stick with us for the long haul.